How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Anthem video. And today I wanted to talk about a number of things. It's no secret that as of late after the Jason Shreya reveal, things have gotten pretty sour at Camp Bioware. Bioware did come out with a proper response after their initial hasty response explaining why they said what they said. I wanted to go over that a little bit and I want to see what's next for Anthem and what we've got to look forward to and how Anthem can change things up as well as upcoming patches. So with that said, if you find this useful, a like would be greatly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell, and don't forget to share. So, it seems after the hasty response from Bioware that came out pretty much minutes after the article was released, and there's no way they would have read that unless it was actually leaked to them prior, it pretty much made an attempt to dismiss the ongoings and defend the people behind the decisions of what was actually going on. Well, Casey Hudson actually came back with a more formal response one that actually has substance and essentially what he's saying is the reason why they didn't respond to the article directly is because it named certain people. Now as you're aware a lot of industries, a lot of publishers do not like this action. If you go to the Bungie forums and you actually start naming players that are actually cheating you will find yourself banned. Yes this is a real thing even though you're highlighting people cheating and you provide video evidence for naming and shaming you get banned. Now, the dangers here is that by naming and shaping people at Bioware, you put them at risk and put them at danger. Sure, people have suffered at their hands due to their mismanagement, but there are a lot of crazy people out there and people can go a bit too far as we have seen in the past. So because of the fact that they were naming and shaming, well, this is against Bioware's policy and any institution that names specific people and puts them in the firing line generally doesn't get a response to. And this is why they had such a big problem with the article, not the fact that the article exposed Bioware. That's fine, and Casey Hudson said in the tweet that you're seeing on screen right now, part of what interested me about returning to Bioware was the challenge of building a new leadership team around solving precisely these problems. We have more to do, but creating a happy and rewarding work environment remains our top priority. So his hire was basically to resolve these issues that were going on. Upper management could clearly see the things going wrong, and they needed some intervention and he was the intervention. Maybe he came too late to make any real impact, but going forward, the hope is that he will have enough of an impact to change this. After all, he is referred to as the Luke Picard's Enterprise. So he does have some sway at Bioware, especially with his reputation. So I do hope that he can actually change things and moving forward, things can look up for the developers. Right, so that is pretty much the article done. Um, I think it's been beaten by a dead horse by now. So I want to move on to more interesting things at Camp Bioware. On April the 8th, 9am on Monday, we have an update that greatly reduces the chances of getting components or javelins you aren't using. This is pretty good news. This update will also make loot earned from an Elysian cache show up immediately after a stronghold finishes. This also fixes the issues where news feeds were blank and more. A full list will be posted on Monday morning, so after work, when I come back, expect another video covering the patch notes and what it's bringing to the table. So next I wanted to talk about what's next for Anthem. From what we've seen, it's pretty stagnant at the moment. Updates and news from Camp Bioware is pretty much dead at the moment in terms of communication. And rightfully so, at the moment, they're being scrutinized for everything they're saying. So staying silent is probably the best thing for them right now and leaving any form of communication to the community managers, that be it Jesse and Andrew. But something I noticed over at the EA website with the roadmap was the cataclysm. So previously when we looked at the Act 1, when you went down to May, it says cataclysm, right? Well, if you're looking on screen right now, it says cataclysm starts. Now, what does this mean? Does this mean the weather's just going to change? Are we going to actually experience the cataclysm? aspirational content are we actually getting anything in may um i really would like to know this question because this is what a lot of people are looking forward to and if this doesn't come in may i can see a lot of people being very 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 upset the player base is dropping quite steadily on pc especially people are finding it difficult to even run content anymore and because it requires four players to run the content they can't even run strongholds at the moment so this is actually a thing by the way this isn't just some made up garbage this is actually a thing if you look over at reddit there's a ton of people who basically can't play the game 
because there's not enough players on the PC platform at present to create a four-man team at a given time. So I really want to know what this Cataclysm Starts means. I don't know at the moment. And if anyone from Bioware can come out and say anything, I have tweeted out to them as to what this symbolizes. But I just thought I'd put it out there. If you guys know anything or have heard anything, let me know in the comment section below because because come May, I was expecting to go into some kind of you know, unique content for the Cataclysm. But this just says Cataclysm Starts. So does this mean that it's going to appear in June? July? I mean, when are we supposed to see the full effect of the Cataclysm? And what is it? So if you do know anything, let me know in the comment section below. Next, I wanted to look at the April update. Stuff that we haven't got yet and is due to come at the end of the month based on what Bioware has been tweeting and saying and commenting on. So we still have the mastery system to look forward to. This should hopefully add the progression system that we've been looking for, give us a new reason to actually go out and progress, right? Because at the moment, doing the same content over and over again, despite the fact that that definition is a looter shooter, doing the same content and not being rewarded and not progressing is kind of boring. So hopefully this mastery system will add a new twist to the progression and give us more incentive to go out and do things. And actually add new features and maybe tweaks and mechanics and skills or whatever it is that will actually make our build building a bit more interesting and thoughtful and just fun to play. We also have a shaper search which again I have no idea what it is. It does seem to be a world event so it probably will be in free play. It does have the world event icon but that doesn't say much. That icon is used for pretty much everything that's default where they don't have an icon for. So hopefully we'll get to hear about the Shaper Surge, the Master System more in the upcoming stream. We'll also be getting Legendary Missions Phase 2. We'll be getting a new Stronghold finally, which I assume the Sunken will be the Outlaws. So this will make farming Outlaws that bit easier. And we'll also be getting weekly Stronghold Challenges. So the April update seems to be quite beefy, but that's not all we're getting. We're also getting leaderboards and guilds. Yes, that thing that people forgot about that existed. We are actually getting them and they should be arriving in April unless they're going to be pushed back to May. So there's quite a bit coming at the end of April. You have the Mastery System, Shaper Surge event, Legendary Missions Phase 2 which will add the rest of the missions. You have the Sunken Stronghold. You have Weekly Stronghold Challenges which I hope will reward you with something. Maybe a guaranteed Legendary item? That would be really awesome, right? And then you have the leaderboards and guilds, so you can now build stuff. And hopefully the way they do the guilds is a bit like how they do it in the division, where the more you play, you can actually reward the whole clan with like a legendary cache that opens a legendary item. So who knows? Maybe stuff like that can still happen in the world of Anthem, right? But the people that say that there's nothing coming in Anthem, Anthem is dead, there's no reason to play this game, there's every reason to play this game. There is still a lot more coming, and they are still highly dedicated to meeting these targets for the 90 day roadmap despite the ongoing problems. And the fact that now they're staying a lot more silent and focusing on actually fixing the game and working on new content, I think personally is a good sign. I think they've been a bit too vocal as of late and that's kind of backfired on them. I get some transparency but just by completely being all over social media probably isn't the best thing for them right now and for anyone really. So yes, I think some, some interaction is good, but currently what they need to do is just knuckle down and get on with it and make sure that this April update smashes it out of the park and delivers with all cylinders firing. They do that, Anthem will be back on the roadmap, pure and simple. If they fuck this update up, then they're in big trouble. And to give you an idea of where things are going, Jesse released a four part tweet. It reads, before the weekend hit, I wanted to give a quick update to the Anthem game community. The team is still working on the next big update, which is pretty much the stuff I've talked about, including new content that we announced on the road map. Basically, the Master System, the Sunken Stronghold, and so forth. We are also working on smaller updates to fix some recent issues, including Elysian Caches not showing the rewards you got right away. Well, this is something we've already covered. Loot dropping for javelins you aren't currently using, we covered this at the beginning of the video. The newsfeed not showing up properly, we've also covered this in the video. He also goes on to say, I'm also working on the next livestream, which may be delayed a bit off the two week cadence, which we've been going with. 
I really want to show everyone the new content we're working on, but I also want to make sure it's ready to present. He finishes by saying, Lastly, we're still working to address a lot of the reports we've been getting on players not being able to complete challenges, missing percentages on items, which is a visual bug, not an actual bug, and more. Stay tuned for more updates next week. Now this was done on the 29th of March, so it's about a week away, so things are rapidly moving. But ultimately we have a lot of content coming at the end of April. The Master System, which we still don't know much about, at least I don't know much about. I mean they have said it's a progression system, so maybe we get that pilot system that they were talking about, where you could upgrade different stats of your pilot that will ultimately affect the overall power of your javelin and give it that much needed customization RPG element. The Shaper Surge could be absolutely anything, it could be what we had during the demo on the final hours, or it could be something astronomically different, I just hope it's not another Insurgent of Titans. Please no. But one thing the Shaper Surge has to do is make it rewarding. I'm not saying it has to guarantee legendaries, but the drop chance during these events has to be huge. It has to be at a point where people will want to sign in and do it, because honestly right now, people can't even be bothered to sign in to do the Elysian caches because of how much filler there is. And considering now there's reports that there are items in the caches that shouldn't be there and actual items on the list that's that's in the Fort Tarsus that isn't on there is really, really sad to see. So as of right now, you've got a 40 day limit for the Elysian caches. They should just make away with that 40 day limit. They should just leave it there and update the list of items with each patch. So people have something to work for, to look forward to, to come on and sign in for. Making it a timed event is never a good thing and I despise it personally. It de-incentivizes me to actually do the content. I like to play my own time. I don't like people dictating how I play the game. And it's one of the main reasons why I stopped playing Destiny because everything was, you have one week to do this, you better do it now or you lose it forever. Just look at the three catalysts from the faction, right? They're gone and they still haven't come back to the game and it's been, what, three months? And these are really massive catalysts. I had to work my ass off in that week to get them. Did I enjoy doing it? No, I really hated it because it forced me to do nothing but that content. And I don't like games that do that. And that's one of the big reasons why I stopped playing Destiny. And I hope Anthem doesn't follow that trope because forcing people to do set content in a set time is just bad. There's no reason why the Elysian cache cannot remain there indefinitely and just update the loot pool. So those people that have already got their 160 items, when the new stuff come along, you'll only get the new items that come along. You know, or they could make it an Elysian cache too. So you use a different key for a different loot pool. Why not? Absolutely, why not? So new players that come in can still enjoy this aspect of the content and Current players can enjoy both this content and the new content. It's a win-win situation. People want to be rewarded, right? So hopefully that will change. But we have the weekly stronghold challenges, the actual new sunken stronghold, which I'm looking forward to. It'd be a nice change to actually do a different stronghold after once in a while. And of course, the leaderboards and guilds, which we still know nothing about. And that's, I think that's the biggest thing here. Whether it comes to the weekly stronghold challenge, the guild, the leaderboards, the sunken, the shaper surge the master system we know nothing and i think in this next stream we're going to find out a lot of information that i'm hoping will blow us away anyway guys that's all i wanted to talk about in this video if they deliver everything that's on this roadmap for april anthem will be back on the roadmap and it will be back in a big way if they do not deliver what they've promised in april in a clean way without major bugs then I fear Anthem is in big trouble. Well guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Leave your comments and questions below. I will get to them. I will read them. I read every comment. So until next time, remain legend.